In this world, horrific monsters called kaiju can attack at any time, destroying dozens of city blocks in an instant. To fight these monsters, the military has formed these specialized task forces to handle situations like these. So after issuing an evacuation order and making sure all the surviving citizens have made it to safety, they are given the all clear to engage with the monster. The whole incident is being broadcast live, so everyone who is not in the danger zone is watching in anticipation to see how the task force takes down this monster. They send in Division 3, and these guys do not play around. As soon as the monster gets distracted for a second, they immediately open fire on its guts and draw its attention by jumping all over the place. But once the prep is completed, one member fires a rail gun at the monster, cutting a hole straight through its chest and causing it to explode from the inside out. Now that the worst of it is over, we get a look at the aftermath of the incident and the poor fellas whose job it is to clean kaiju guts out of the city streets. The 3rd Division receives a lot of cheers from the people whom they have saved with their quick response time, but none of that praise is ever going to be going towards Kafka or his team. And that's because their job only starts after the fighting is already over. No one cares about their work and they get no thanks for their efforts, but it's a necessary job so Kafka is happy to get it done. As he is hacking away at the kaiju meat, a drone comes over to him saying the research department wants a sample of the monster, so he puts some of it in a test tube and puts it in the drone. On the ground, a member of Kafka's team makes the mistake of hoisting up some of the guts of the monster, and despite Kafka warning him not to do it, it was already too late as he has acid sprayed on his body. It burns straight through his suit, but Kafka knows how to treat the wound since he has had something similar happen to him before, so he is sure his teammate will be fine. Kaka takes a moment to look at the workload they still got left to do, and he has no idea how they expect him to be able to completely remove this thing in less than a week. The team manager comes up to Kafka and tells him he is being transferred to clear another section of the monster, but it's the intestines, so Kafka wants nothing to do with it. It gets dragged away anyway. After a long day of dealing with monster shit, Kafka returns home but he can still smell the doo-doo up in his nose. He grabs a tissue to try to get rid of the smell. And he then notices a news report about the Keiju incident and the captain of the 3rd Division who took it down. Mina Ashiro. Not only did she manage to become the captain of her division in a relatively short time, but she is also credited with taking down hundreds of Kaiju. It seems like Kafka has known Mira since childhood as they made a promise to get rid of all Kaiju together. But with how things have turned out, Kafka is left wondering how he ended up on the sidelines like this. He tries not to think about it because he'll feel like a failure otherwise, but cleaning up Kaiju shit is an important job as well, so he tries to convince himself that he's important as well. The next day, Kaka heads into work in a bad mood, and once he gets there, he is called over by one of his co-workers who wants to introduce him to the new part-time worker. His name is Ichikawa and he says he is determined to join the defense force one day, but the others laugh at him and say Kafka had the same dream years ago, but he eventually gave up on all that and settled into his role of clearing out kaiju parts. He is saying all this to praise Kafka, but it's just delivering bonus damage to his already fragile sense of pride. Ichikawa asks him why he chose to give up on his dream, but Kafka doesn't really have an answer for him. He just realized that his abilities were limited, so he couldn't bring himself to continue trying when he didn't have confidence in himself. Even though he knows it's a sad way to look at things, he tries to laugh it off and says Ichikawa will understand when he gets older, but Ichikawa refuses to accept Kaka's depressing way of life. When they are getting assigned their work positions for the day, Ichikawa gets assigned to the intestines, so Kaka starts doing a victory dance as payback for making him feel like a failure this morning. But then Kafka also gets assigned to the intestines again, meaning another long and disgusting day of handling kaiju shit. By the time it's their lunch break, Ichikawa is completely wiped out by the stench he had to endure, and the same goes for Kafka as well. He looks over and notices that Ichikawa only brought one bento box for lunch today, while it's understandable that he wouldn't have much of an appetite after what he went through. He still needs to get proper nutrition so Kafka tosses him a vitamin packet otherwise, he won't be able to last through the rest of the day. Ichikawa initially wants to refuse it, but Kafka insists he take it, as well as these nose plugs which he says will make the intestine work at least somewhat bearable. Ichikawa is still being stubborn about listening to Kafka, so he stops asking and forcefully shoves them up his nose. Afterwards, they continue their kaju cleaning till the end of the day. Once they can finally start packing up for the day, the others head out first while Kafka goes over the checklist of things they've done today, and he's glad the intestines are finally done, so he won't be needing to do that horrible work anymore. As he is still looking over the things they've done, 
Ichikola approaches him from behind, so Kafka jokingly asks if he's coming back for revenge after he had nose plugs shoved up his nose. But on the contrary, Ichikawa is actually really grateful for what Kafka did to help him. It was thanks to his kindness that Ichikawa was able to make it through a whole day on the intestines, so he wants to show his appreciation. That's all he had to say, but as he is walking away, he turns back and tells Kafka that the age limit on recruiting for the Defense Force was raised to 33 due to the declining birth rates, so Kafka is within the eligibility criteria now. Ichikawa knows he has no right to question the life choices of others, but he could tell that when Kafka talked about giving up on his dream of joining the Defense Force, he looks sad. With that being said, Ichikawa doesn't care what Kafka decides to do, so he can choose to ignore what he just told him and continue his life as he normally would. Kafka thanks Ichikawa for looking out for him even though they only met today, but as Ichikawa turns around to respond, this fricker pops out of the ground and is about to chomp down on him. However, before we can lose Ichikawa to the monster, Kafka somehow manages to close the distance in half a second and push him out of the way. Ichikawa is surprised by the feat Kafka was able to just pull off, but they aren't out of the woods yet since the monster attacks again and Kafka is forced to kick him out of the way. He yells at Ichikawa to run away from here as fast as possible, so he can call the defense courts to come handle this, but Ichikawa doesn't want to leave him behind to handle a monster like this on his own. Kafka doesn't think he has what it takes to take the monster down by himself, but he also knows Ichikawa being here isn't going to help at all. He's still young and has his dream of joining the Defense Corps, so he can't let himself be killed here like this. Ichikawa doesn't like it, but he has no other choice but to leave Kafka behind, so he starts running off and Kafka draws the kaiju's attention in the other direction. It begins chasing him and Kafka is running for his life, and he's moving really well for someone who gave up on his dreams. He finds a doorway into a building and thinks he can use it to escape the kaiju, so he runs inside while the kaiju gets stuck at the door, allowing him to create some much-needed distance and jump through a window to get out of there. This leads him to have a flashback of his younger days right after his hometown got destroyed by a kaiju attack. Both his and Mina's homes and school were destroyed, but what had him the most upset at the time was that he lost his holographic Charizard Pokemon card in the chaos. Mina was upset that her favorite cat ended up dying. They both decided that they wanted to become Defense Force officers, so Kafka made it a competition to see who could become the coolest officer between the two of them, and then they'll eliminate Kaiju together. Back to the present, Kafka lands on the ground and continues running after he gets up from the ground. He doesn't know how he let things get so off track after he made that promise with Mina, but he's got to survive this Kaiju first before he can think about that. He can't outrun it any longer, so he picks up a pipe and prepares to take a stand. But despite knowing that he needs to target its legs first, Kafka is frozen in fear and gets knocked out by the Kaju. He then has his leg crushed by the monster's hand, and with him now unable to move, it lowers its head so it can eat in whole. However, before Kafka is killed, Ichikawa shows back up and knocks the monster's jaw away. Kafka yells at him for putting himself in danger like this, but Ichikawa says he already notified the defense force, however, that doesn't mean he is just going to abandon a friend in trouble especially one that is badly injured. If he did something like that, then he wouldn't have the right to ever call himself a Defense Force officer. Kafka realizes that he has always failed to protect the things around him, even now, he is failing to protect his junior who's about to get squished. Just then, a tiger comes out of nowhere and tackles the kaiju's hand before several blasts are sent towards the monster, carving it up before a final blast blows out its back. This was the work of Mina and her squad, but she doesn't spare a second for Kafka as she hands his care over to some of her subordinates and heads off to go clear the area of any remaining monsters. Later, Kafka is in the hospital and thinking about how amazing Mina is and how she's gotten to a level where he can't reach her anymore, but he gets startled when Ichikawa, who is in the next bed, starts talking to him. He thanks him because if he hadn't saved him when the monster first arrived, or hadn't gotten Ichikawa to run and inform the defense force, then he would have certainly died in that battle. So as far as Ichikawa is concerned, Kafka is really cool. He really thinks he would make a great Defense Force officer, but that's still his own choice to make. Hearing this from Ichikawa that helps Kafka make up his mind to try to join the Defense Force once more, but then he notices this freaky thing just flying over his head, and before he can even yell, it has already forced his way down into his throat. He begins squirming in pain, but by the time Ichikawa is able to check on him, he has already turned into a kaiju monster. 
They are both dumbfounded to find that Kafka's appearance has changed, but Kafka tells Ichiko to calm down since he is still the same person on the inside. However, this old man doesn't seem to care and immediately calls the defense force to have Kafka eliminated. Elsewhere, Mina is having a flashback to the days when she and Kafka would spend time working on their kaiju slaying tactics. She found it really scary to have to fight something that would be several times her own size, but Kafka reassured her that he would always be by her side to help her through it. However, that was a freaking lie. She gets out of the bathtub and answers a call about the Keiju incident report at the hospital, and she says she will be there to handle the situation shortly. This was the end of episode 1. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to not miss the next part.